<gasps> Don't jump, little man. You have to be a good bearded dragon if we're gonna do this. Recently, I went to America and Canada for a bit and I visited a bunch of other aquarium content creators and I actually ended up doing something I didn't expect to do. So when I went to Ohio Fish Rescue, Big Rich there, he offered to call Brian Barcheck and see if I could visit the reptarium because the reptarium is only about three hours or maybe two and a half hours away from where they are in Cleveland, Ohio. In this video, you're gonna to get to meet Brian and we're gonna have a look at this awesome, incredible zoo. So many of you probably know Brian's channel already. He's got an incredible channel. He has been uploading on there for over 10 years, I think now. And he's developed this awesome private zoo, which was originally more centered around reptiles, hence the reptarium. And there's a lot of rare and unusual reptiles that you're gonna see there. But he's also extended it out to give the mammal family some love as well. So he's got a sloth, he's got a cabibara, he's got Grillo, the armadillo too. And we're gonna get to have a play with all of these animals and check them out and do a full behind the scenes day at the zoo. So I think you're really gonna enjoy this video and having this little private tour through it and getting to see how the channel as well operates and everything and meet the staff behind it. Because Brian is battling cancer at the moment, he is putting a lot of energy into his dreams. So the things that he always wanted to achieve, the animals he always wanted to own, and the Legacy Aquarium is one of those things. So this has motivated him to get moving on that and try and create the best thing that he can. And hopefully he's gonna be here to enjoy that for many years to come because that's the plan. Um, but everyone has been putting a lot of effort and donations into helping this get off the ground. And when this opportunity presented itself, I thought I have to do it. So. What I did was I canceled my flight to Chicago and I hired a car. I drove the three hours to get to Detroit. I visited the reptarium there and then I kept driving another about five hours, I think it was, to get to Chicago for Greg Whitstock's event that I went to there. But it was totally worth it. I'm so glad that I went. And the hope is for it to be finished by December this year, so December 2023. Animal Con is also coming up, which Brian is directly involved with, so that's very exciting. I wish so much that I could be going Going to Animal Con. I'm planning to go next year, hopefully. I just didn't go this year because I just did my first trip to the US and met everyone and I thought I'll just leave it for a little bit. I don't wanna be hanging around too much and we'll come back next year, hopefully. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. We got something to tell you. And also comment below as well, but comment was too big to write, so we just went with this. You guys ready? Ooh, like and subscribe. From the African Cichlids. And Layla, you were completely unhelpful in that, but at least you got to make some noise in the background, hey? So great to have you here. I mean, I'm so grateful that you made the trip all the way here and took the time out of your day uh, to drive all the way out of your way it's to come here. It's, it's awesome. Pleasure. Well, I want you to meet animals. I want you to have a good time. I want you to just, whatever you want, you're our guest here and uh, enjoy it. And uh, you, you'll, we want you to not just love fish, we want you to love reptiles. Is there anything in particular that you wanted to say about like, this place and the plans that you've got at all? Or? Well, you know, I mean, I, it's, you know, the reptarium, the whole idea with the reptarium was to create an environment that was unlike any other reptile zoo, right? And that was like, we always said that the, the animals come out beyond the glass, right? So when you come in, I mean a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a 12-year-old come in, they can hold snakes, they can hold lizards, they can hold turtles, they can feed alligators, they can feed tortoises. You know, this interactive experience, because we really felt like, like if, you could touch it and hold it and feel it you love it yes you yes. know and, and so i can't tell you how many people come in that are terrified they come in they're like I, i'm not going to hold my snake and then by the end they're holding everything and they're so into it and that's really the mission statement and now you know to take the next step further we're entering into your world yes. which of course is the fish world and we're building the legacy aquarium and uh it'll be a rep reptile zoo an aquarium and uh also some mammals yes. and uh and, and again same type of thing our saying is we want you get your hands to be wet from the time you walk in till the time you leave you know because there's going to be feeding stingrays or you can actually snorkel with stingrays uh, awesome. you can wow. you know feed koi you can feed shark you know predator fish like arapaima you know i mean there's going to be touch tanks there's going to be all kinds of stuff so it's the same type of principle and it's always just my mission statement is to create an experience mm -hmm. that is unlike any experience you can get anywhere else and uh and that's what we're excited about and uh and we're uh 
airport. We're putting all our energy into that. And if everything goes well by Christmas time, uh, we will be open across the street. And uh, you can come back, hang out, and you I can go swim with stingrays and, and uh, have a great time. I will be back for sure. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. I've really, really appreciated it. My pleasure. Have fun. Enjoy. The place is yours. Brian just had to shoot off to a doctor's appointment, but he was kind enough to say that I can hang around and have a little bit of a look around again and show you what I saw before when he took me through. I didn't want to film that because I just wanted to focus on taking it all in and everything, and it's our first time meeting, so that was a really great experience. But I'm going to show you around now. So first, what we're going to meet is Sid, and Sid is not a sloth. Sid is a porcupine. And so Maria and Jay are over there giving Sid a little bit of food. So I had a look at him when he was downstairs before. But yeah, he's here. We just got Sid. Um, Sid came from a breeder in Florida. He's a, um, uh, he's a African crested porcupine. He's the largest species of porcupine yeah. in the entire world. I primarily work with most of our mammals here. Um, so we have four of them here. We have Drogo, who's our two-toed sloth. We have Brillo, our six-banded armadillo. This is Sid. Sid is our giant African crested porcupine who is a little pipsqueak right now, but these guys can actually reach up to 70 pounds. Um, and then we have our little capybara friend named Javier, who, who is, you will actually bring over in a oh minute. Oh my gosh, yeah. he's so sweet. You're gonna love him. Yeah. So our primary focus here with our mammals is getting people to enjoy and actually get to experience what it's like to interact with them, feed them, and just really get up close and personal and fall in love with them just as, as much as everybody else that works here has fallen in love with everything that we have. Um, and then with Sid, what we're doing right now is just desensitizing Sid a little bit to more human interaction, getting him to be comfortable with a little human touch and actually like coming up on people and eating and petting him while he eats, um, just so that way he can calm down and not poke us to death half the time. Yeah, being a porcupine, obviously their main defense is to, you know, quill, like throw those quills up and back into something. So immediately out of the, you know, out of the womb, they, they have that reaction to, if something touches them, put your quills up, it's better to hurt something that's not there than to not hurt something that is there. So Maria touching his face while he's eating, us talking even around him, is getting him used to being around humans and all the commotion that goes on here at the Reptarium. Yeah, he's very splotchy. He is very splotchy, very. and his hairdo is and next level. I love his little booty rattle. He rattles his tail just like our little rattlesnake, so he definitely gives you a little warning before he'll ever try to poke you. Which is an interesting thing in itself, right? Because these animals, especially the African Cresteds, have been nowhere near a rattlesnake their entire life. Rattlesnakes don't even live on the same continent as them, yet they've learned mimicry to rattle like a rattlesnake, which just, to me, is just mind-blowing. Do you know what he kind of feels like? He feels like hairspray, like when you put too much hairspray right. in oh your Right. Oh my head. god. Yeah. All gelled out, yeah. Yeah, all gelled out. Yeah, so his name is Sid for the punk rocker Sid Vicious, that had like the, the from the Sex Pistols, that had like yeah. the mohawk and stuff. Okay. Look, yeah. at, look at them cool up. Down, Sid. <laughs> That's my shoe. That way. This, yeah, this. I love how Brian just like gets right into it. Like he'll just like put the edible in your head. Yeah, like, always. And I'm like, it's, hang on a second, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no explanation. No. Yeah. So the the thing is, is with Brian, Brian's been lucky enough to spend most of his life doing these experiences, right? where he can go to zoos, you know, because of his social media following, he can go to zoos and get behind the scenes and interact with animals that people never get to interact with. And that was his whole kind of thing with this place, is to give all the little kids the experiences that he's gotten to have over the years by letting animals come out and, like you said, kind of just put them right in your lap, you Always. know? And Always. Yeah, I went, we went on a couple trips with Brian. I went on one particularly where we got to interact with baby lions. And like that's a, I'm like I don't know. Am I supposed to touch it? Am I gonna get bit? Like how bad does it hurt? And I almost got bit in the face, but Where you going? unfortunately I didn't. That's lucky. <laughs> I, I was hoping I, I should, as soon as I was done, I was mad I didn't let it bite me in the yeah, face. It's an experience. What a story to have yeah, your lip cut open. I think one of my favorite experiences with Brian was our first meeting with him going out on a road trip. We went to the. Um, what was Timbavati it? Alligator Zoo. Alley. Oh, Alligator Alley, yeah. And our first encounter, actually, with an anaconda, with me filming with him for the first time, we went into this enclosure, and then the anaconda turned around so fast. And we big had... Big one, 300-pound anaconda. A big huge. female. So we had a small square space of window that we had to get out of stat because Brian was like, she's turning around, she's coming in hot, you got to go. So we're trying to squeeze through this stupid window. It was, cool. <laughs> it was a really funny experience, but I love adrenaline. I'm an adrenaline junkie, too. So so <laughs> That's why you work with yeah. snakes, right? It's, it's so much fun. 
Um, I'm the opposite. I avoid anything that's risky. And that's why you like fish. I get, yeah. You're like, they can't even get like, into the air by yeah, me. Like, yeah, yeah, there's no oh, chance. Yeah, in the water. Cichlids are amazing, though. They're beautiful, oh. beautiful fish. Like Brian said, we want, next time you come, you'll have to see the aquarium house. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. Them. And like, you know, they're just such a beautiful fish and they're just a oh, work yeah. of na oh, natural art, you know. Gorgeous. So just across the road right there, you can see it there. Greg Whitstock is coming next week. Literally, to... uh, yeah, the next Monday, everyone's gonna be here to start building out. So yeah. we're excited. That's awesome. Oh, and look what you can see behind as well. There's just a massive anaconda just chilling in there. A green anaconda. And that's Ivy. <laughs> she is huge. I'll go sit near her so you can see how big she is. <laughs> it's so hard getting things to show up like how big they are on camera. It's impossible. Oh my gosh, do you like me? They can get up to 300 pounds, 18 foot. They are the most heavy bodied snake, but they're not known as man eaters. Um, whereas the largest snake in the world, the reticulated python, is from Indonesia and has been reports of eating people. Oh, even in this past year, there was a, a, a small woman that was eaten. Right, in Indo. Yeah. And, um, you know, that goes for two things. One, the snakes there are giant, and two, the people there are not as giant. You know, That's true. yeah. So it, it kind of works. It's a best or worst of both worlds, I guess. Yes, and I actually have read about that because that's one of the things I do late at night. I've got black like, horror stories. Like, oh my god, you and Brian would get along great because yeah. Brian will be like, "I don't want to go on a boat," and then looks up every reason you shouldn't go on a boat for three months. He'll be like, "Have you heard of the Drake's Passage?" And he's like, "I watched thirty videos on the Drake's Passage." You know, I think that's the thing with people that are into the animals and animal world and stuff. We're obsessive. So whether it's a good thing or bad thing, we get obsessed with it and we go down the rabbit hole time and time again, you know? I love it. Cute. So Sid's gonna finish up his carrots here and then we're gonna grab Javi, the capybara, and bring him over here and he runs around like crazy, so that should be a lot of fun. Oh my goodness. Oh, you love me so much. <laughs> That's so cute. And we're gonna go check out the camera room. Woohoo! Is it fine to leave my camera here? You can leave everything, yeah. <laughs> It's just us today. And so, yeah, Jay's gonna show us the camera room. Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. So I, we film, up until recently, we filmed seven days a week, every single day, 14 minute vlog. Uh, within the last year, we cut down to six days a week, just to give us a little bit extra time to work on each video. And now we've cut down to five, five days a week. Still crazy for most people that is though. crazy. And you guys have a huge channel, so I'm sure most of my viewers will have seen the channel anyway. Hopefully, and if not, come check us out because it is sure. a lot of fun. Oh, yes. Um, so recently we built out this room. It is a little bit messy, but that's okay. That's where my art thrives. This is our green room. We, we did a podcast for a while. We probably will in the future too. This is where people get to hang out and actually I VIPs. I haven't seen this yet. Yeah, this is cool, huh? This is we do have a little VIP. fish tank. Nothing crazy, but a couple clowns. Wow. And a Cardinal Bang guy. We've got a YouTube awards as well. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's awesome. Yeah, we're halfway to another one, but. Halfway. Yeah, to uh, for to our podcast that. channel. Yeah. And then oh. this is our gear room. So there's like, oh my gosh. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of camera gear. I see why you wanted to show this to me now. Yeah, it's a cool place. This is crazy. And it's funny because I'm a very minimalist person when it comes to filming. I mean, I literally film 90% of our videos. This is minimalistic. With this. All of this doesn't get used. <laughs> this is all dusty. So Brian's been on YouTube for 14 years. Uh, he's shot with Discovery Channel. And on top of that, he's also shot his own documentary called Brian in the Wild. So a lot of this stuff was bought for those. Um, I'm a Sony shooter, just like yourself. Yeah. So I don't use most of this gear, to be honest with you. But there is quite a bit. Tyler's in here. This is where we used to do our podcast. <laughs> it looks like an enclosure. <laughs> it's so crazy. Our life is That's nuts. That's cool. So Tyler, wow. Tyler right now, he's doing some spreadsheets, he which is know I'm filming him. so much fun. <laughs> Hi, Tyler. <laughs> and then... Uh, that's where we used to do our podcast. We used to do three podcasts a week. Wow. Because we always do everything crazy. But um, we've now since cut back to focus on more important things and maybe we'll do it again in the future. Is that Steve Owen? You know it is, dude. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he's an idol to all of us always, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's our gear room. There's way too much and honestly, oh. I'm trying to cut back. Look but what it is. I'm using this gimbal right now. I think it's the same one. It is. It's got cobwebs on it. You haven't used it in that long. <laughs> I know. I and I have too much stuff. I have one, two, three gimbals, and I haven't used any of them in that long. Oh. Actually, since I went and visited Mr. Beast, um, yeah, that's so cool. You got to visit Mr. Beast. Yeah, and it was, 
it was an eye-opening experience because I'm like you and like I love filmmaking and I love b-roll and I love making things look beautiful and they were the complete opposite. They were like, oh, make no. it look like chaos because that's what no. kids want. <laughs> kids don't want like the perfect. nice shots. That's and, true. And it's like it's hard as a filmmaker to hear that because yes. you're like, oh, but that's what I want. That's, that's where I so shine. True. They want like the wobbly camera, like yeah. the in and the out. And don't get stuff. me wrong, I get some comments on our videos that are like, please hold the damn camera still. But ninety percent of it is it's just it's more eye catching to people when it's jarring. That's very true. So it helps a little. There's our camera. Well, thank you for showing us. That's awesome. Oh. And that is a huge lens. I just, that looks like a telescope. <laughs> <laughs> what do you shoot with that? This one? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't used it yet. We were planning on going to Africa. <laughs> So oh, we were getting it for safari. Yeah, you don't want to get too close to lions. <laughs> no, yeah, well, I'll keep my distance from a lion. But uh, we haven't used it yet. I do have the Sony version, but not as a, a full six. I have the 200 to six. It's a Whoa. little bit lighter, which is nice. That's good. Yeah. That These are actually good. mine. And then I have another couple of Sony cameras. Oh, we probably have four bag. Sony cameras. Wow, and I've been complaining about my camera bag carrying it oh, around. It's so heavy when that it has really all, else. when it has like this, oh, it's my drone. Backpack. Oh, and your drone. I mean, dude, it'll be 60 pounds it's, carrying yeah. it around Florida. It's not That's fun. what I aspire to one day. Yeah. We'll have a camera backpack with a drone in it. I got one thing to show you. One more thing yeah. to show you. This is where we would normally walk for our podcast. But now it's just a spreadsheet room. <laughs> no, no, you're good, dude. You're, you're fine. I'm just going to show her this room real fast. So this is our New Caledonia gecko room. Ooh. Um, New Caledonia, if I'm not mistaken, is an island that's like off the coast of Australia. Yes, and it is. it's French Polynesian. I have owned. been there actually. You have been I there. I have, yes. All of these except for a couple are geckos from New Caledonia. Right. Cresteds, gargoyles, Lichianus geckos, Saracenorums, the list goes on and on. But this is how we are trying you've seen the breeding stuff earlier with Brian. This is what we're trying to get to. Yeah. Less animals, bigger enclosures. Yes. Um, more naturalistic. Not that there's anything wrong with the other way of doing things. I just think that this is a lot more fun to show off and stuff, you know? Absolutely. So. I can't see a single gecko. One right here. Oh, I must be blind. <laughs> they blend in very well they for being colorful. Do. That's so cool. Say hi. I love geckos. I wish we could have more in Australia. I know. Yeah, we don't have a lot here either. Just in Florida. Yeah, oh my God, bye, buddy. We, in Florida, there's a lot of invasive stuff. I loved Florida. Florida here's a, was awesome. Here's a lead you. Florida is a great place for animal stuff. I didn't even notice this one either. There's a bunch, honestly, that you probably won't notice, but they're here. When you were like, I've got one thing to show you. Yeah. You were like, well, one more thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's more than one. You thing. never know. <laughs> I always forget about stuff too. But yeah, so every cage does have, we get eggs all the time. Jessica is the breeder here that breeds everything. But as you can yeah. see, we have eggs coming out. And because they're so naturally planted and well planted out, a lot of the times we don't even find the eggs. We'll just see baby geckos one day oh, in the morning, which is really cool. cool. How do you get a job like this? Okay, so video one, I can, I can attest to more. Maybe we'll ask Maria, the animal one, a little bit right. more. So for a video job, the most important thing for me was like taking the time to make sure I'm good enough to be worth somebody's time. So I put about two years into like hardcore, like watching videos, studying what people are doing, watching YouTube and understanding the content and the type of content. And then um, Brian was one of the people I watched. And he happened to mention that he was looking for a filmer and a videographer. A videographer. And I just happened to be kind of in the right place, right time. But the most important thing for me uh, from him, this is what he would say about me, was my attitude. Having a positive, upbeat, go-getter attitude, like, yo, I'm down to do anything. Let's go sit on the mountain for four hours. I get a time lapse. I'm fine. And being okay with doing whatever somebody needs you to do to get the perfect shot. And also being efficient and never dropping the ball. I've been here four years now. I've done 1,300 videos with Brian. I've never missed one upload. I've never missed one day. I've never lost a video. I've never lost a piece of a video. Listen, mistakes happen, but that's a pretty good track record. And that's what you need to try to do as like a filmer and videographer and editor, whatever it is, 
is to make sure you're reliable and have a great attitude. Yes, I noticed that about you straight away, actually. Oh, yeah. thank you, I yeah. appreciate it. Being really friendly and really energetic, yeah. Right, and that's important because you know, like if I was trying to get a job for you, you don't know anything about my filming or editing. Yes. And anyone can really learn to do it. You know what I mean? It, take, it took me less than two years to learn it online. So anyone can learn to do it, but not everyone's gonna be fun to be around. Yes. And if you're a filmer, if I'm your filmer, we're gonna be together all the time. Yes. So you wanna get along with them for sure. Yes, I think what you're saying too, it's like being open to experience and being right. flexible too, being able to go with the flow. Yeah, I mean, if Brian called me tonight and said, hey, we're going to Australia tomorrow, I'm dropping everything and going to Australia. Yeah. And that's what he needs and that's what I'm here for. Yeah, totally with you on that. Perfect. Wanna go meet the Cappy? I would love to. He's so Hello. cute. So this is Javier. He is our capybara that we have. Um, he actually came from, where did we get him actually from? Um, Blake's Exotics down in Florida. Oh, so Blake's Exotics down in Florida. And Javier is going for a little joy ride. Javi. <laughs> We're gonna go say hi, I guess, to the armadillo. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here. Where are we going? Do so, they get along, the armadillo and Javi? So, Brillo is extremely rambunctious, so I would always tread with caution with him. Yeah. Um, so, he looks like he's dead. Oh I promise he's gosh. not. <laughs> this boy is so overdramatic with the way he sleeps, it's hysterical. Um, so, sometimes when he goes to go to bed, he'll throw a lot of the substrate on him. It's hysterical. <laughs> yeah, so Javier, actually, um, he can reach up to 150 pounds. It is a male capybara, so yes, he will get... Feed pretty big um so it's kind of ironic that we have him and you know we have our anacondas and stuff here um but they will never meet i promise <laughs> yeah but um javier is super cute he has been doing really well with socialization um he literally will follow me everywhere i want to go um and he'll chirp for me and i chirp back and he'll actually come back for me so sometimes i just try to like play with him a little bit and we'll kind of like hide around the corner and he'll actually come find me that's so cute. He's really cute. Sid and Javier won't be able to be seen yet by the public until we are comfortable with the idea that they're gonna be okay around a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good that you're here and we see other people because he needs to have that desensitization, but not overwhelmingly so. Um, so we wanna do it in small bunches, not too quickly. Yes, but eventually. When, eventually, yes. Yeah, when he is bigger. Yeah, when he's a little bit bigger, that's the alligator water, silly goose. No, you're too fascinated by like the water? I feel like that's like a statement that you wouldn't hear in many places. <laughs> I'm like, my bar is drinking the alligator water. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> this alligator enclosure is the bane of Mike's existence right now. So yeah, it's leaking. It doesn't stop. And they're getting so big too that it's causing like a bowing issue in the, in the oh. bottom of the thing. This is salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, Very yes. Very fitting names. And are they um, boy and girl or? They're both female. Both female, okay. Yeah, I heard um, a while back that Brian might be considering utilizing pepper in a breeding program because melanistic alligators are actually kind of rare. In comparison to how many there are in the world, there are fewer melanistic alligators than there are albinos. Um, so that's the whole purpose of why they wanna do the breeding program is to put more into circulation and make them more available for keepers and zoos to have in the future. Right, we had a dragon from Australia. Hello, hello. Come say hi to Connie. Oh, oh, oh. That was gone for 10 days, so. <laughs> oh, oh, all of a sudden you know squeaks. Spanish now? Yeah, he understands Spanish. Well, I really love this capybara, but I haven't bonded with um, him as much. Bella is probably my favorite. Bella, we go see it. Yeah, we can go see her. Good thing when starting here was like the filming. All the filming, yes. I never like anticipated to be a part of it, but then Brian and Jay were just like, "Hey, you should uh, do this or say this or you know become a part of it." Yeah. And it's definitely like a little weird at first. This is Bella. Oh my goodness. So Bella. Oh, sorry, I dropped that. She's like a little dinosaur. She is. Yeah. So I'm glad that she's like being good because um, I cleaned her water bowl out and usually when you do that I don't know why it upsets her so oh. bad sometimes like when you do that she'll like hang out on her perch and she yeah. won't get off but what I love about Bella is because she's kind of um, she has like a lot of character 
and she you can tell a loves affection i don't know if you can see this eye over here but like when you pet her she starts closing them she really loves She's loving it the attention and affection <laughs> and um i love that because i love to give affection to the animals here and you can see her like stance when she like raises her tail and she kind of like yes has like the best posture ever that's yes. when you know she She's is like, ready yes. for the pets that's the spot there's another iguana that does not like you as much yeah tabasco <laughs> i mean to be fair one. he doesn't really like anybody right so it's, but not just, it's not personal i deal with him a lot so i get the brunt of it because the people right. closest to you they usually you get to see their uglier sides that is you true know? that's true do you want to go see tabasco yeah let's go see him he's never bit me or anything but he's tried He's tried. You can see all of his um, oh, sneezes. Oh he's going already. Yeah, he'll, he's very territorial. So usually the worst of it is um, like when you're just in, when you take him out, he doesn't really ever try to attack you. But like if, if I were to like just reach my hand, oh, see that? Like if I were to reach my hand in there and, not, and I'm not petting him, like yeah. he'll definitely try to bite me. And they actually just put this decal up which i like because with people nodding their heads at it yeah so. i've seen him like dive from the top of his little perch oh into the glass no way at like visitors and oh they God. like scream and i'm like it is scary i mean there's been so many times i've been like just in zen mode here working quiet and i walk past and he dives into the glass and it scares the oh crap no. out of me. That yeah. would scare me too. Um, we can try. I can try to see like how he'll be if I give him pets. No. You, yeah, no, maybe not. not. <laughs> <laughs> There's another iguana we have over here. Tiana. Are we gonna be good girl? Are we gonna be good girl? So she's more predictable, at least with when you when she's gonna bite you. Yeah. It has something to do with you touching her personal like items. Oh um, yeah, because they're so territorial. Yes. So if you like when I go to feed her, she'll try to bite my hand then. <laughs> um but then usually like if you just give her some loves, she's pretty cool. I think Jay told me a funny story. He said he was giving a tour. And he's like, you don't have to worry about this one. She doesn't bite. And she literally like jumped out of the cage and got him on the face. Oh no, I'm yeah. gonna step back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not trying to scare you. She really is like a good girl. She's just like, if you're, the, the way that the iguanas work here, at least these two, it's really weird. If you're petting them, they're okay. But if you stop and you're just like, meddling around with their stuff then sometimes they're like more you're gonna be more likely to probably get there. yeah it's like something changes in their brain yes she's a good girl and then we've got like the most chill animal here ever Problem. oh brillo <laughs> yeah he's actually he doesn't have a clean record really yeah actually i think he bit brian today when i was here yeah he he will like nibble I have, i've never oh. had anything happen to me but if you're not careful, like, and his bite hurts. So. He was humping me as well. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what he does. He that's was humping my knee. It looks like an upper Yeah, door. he's kind of a perv. <laughs> and apparently you can't see very well. There was a, I don't know if you saw the viral, it was like a viral clipper video of him with his wiener. Oh. And I, I mean, even to the point where like my husband, Carlos, uh, he was like said he's like hey the Connie this is where you work I'm like yeah like he was just finding on his Facebook feed. oh no yeah I don't know if I have seen it yeah I'll have to have a well, look he's well known for that it was shenanigans a little, little hairy tummy too mm -hmm. that's so funny yeah oh is that his thing yeah it's his yep <laughs> I don't even notice I don't know how PC like I have or do I have to be like can I say <laughs> it, his, yeah yeah his penis is it normally like that or is yeah. he okay mm -hmm. What, it's just like that all the time? Yeah, it's just out and about. Okay. Isn't that crazy? That's not for like breeding. That's just how it is naturally. I mean, whenever I see him laying on his back like that. Okay. <laughs> so he's just pretty, it's there. He might be having dreams about Aye. stuff. <laughs> that's so funny. No, but yeah, usually when he's laying like that, he, he does have it out. People are like, is that his belly button? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Elvis is like a really cool animal. Elvis. The Asian water monitor over here. He's um like a, f a fan favorite. Let's see if he comes out. Usually he likes to come out. So. Oh, he actually comes out. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of times, like when I'm cleaning, we'll let him out and like walk around, cause 
He'll u he'll usually push his way out. He and so is this sign a joke sign? <laughs> oh yes. Uh, <laughs> you know I don't even pay attention to that anymore because I'm so used to seeing it. But yes, that is a joke. He comes out with like for open hours all the oh time. Oh my gosh, he's huge. Is there anything I should know about interacting with him? Um, as long as there's no food involved, which right now he's not, you know, he's not in food mode, I can tell because usually when he's in food mode, he's more, his movements are more erratic, so his head will be a lot moving like way faster. Right. He's just kind of like flicking his tongue, sensing everything, smelling everything around him. And, um, yeah, but so sometimes if there's like food involved, you have to break the association between feed time and pet time. Otherwise, you might, you know, get your fingers oh no. caught in his mouth. But if you want to touch him, it's really cool the way he feels. Somebody okay. at open hours a while back, and I always say this, but they said it's like the texture of a basketball. And I'm like, that is the most accurate way to describe oh. it. Then. Is this okay? That yes, of okay. course. Okay. Don't. He comes around out around kids, and he's like super chill. So he's been worked with. I, I don't know exactly how long they've had him for, um, like, but the entire time I know Mike's been here. I mean, a couple of years, if not. I don't think they had him since he's a baby. Um, they've had Toothless since Toothless was a baby. Toothless is also really cool. I could show him to you if you'd like. Yeah. But yes, he is super tame, super used to being around people. I mean, all the animals here pretty much, with a few exceptions, are around people all of the time. The ones we have in Australia, yeah. like they tear you up pretty bad. Like. Yeah, well if, what do you mean, with their nails? Yeah, with their nails. Yeah. Not, not intentionally, but if you, you know, freak them out. Oh, like. yeah, so like, you could see my arm has got, it's not that bad, but there's like, a lot of oh, scarring yeah. and stuff from picking up the iguanas and the monitors and they yeah like they don't mean to do it but you know they have sharp nails there's no like really graceful way to do this <laughs> and then I just try to keep low not to break my back because he is heavy it's nice how they all like their enclosures too yeah like they don't mind going back oh in. yeah some of them like they'll just go back on their own come on what? He came out earlier with me today. So he's definitely rare. I don't know like statistically, but he's like all melanistic. Yeah. So it's like the contrary of, it's like um, pepper. Yes, you know? yes, the opposite mm -hmm. of being albino. Yeah, right. Oh gosh, he's beautiful. Yeah, he is beautiful. How you doing, Bobs? I'm just shedding too. I love to sh to peel their shed when it's like flaky and like that. It's <laughs> flaky and loose. Hey, butts. He's cute. He might actually try to come crawl out here. Got it, bud. When he's out, he he likes to go to. Elvis's enclosure a lot and try to beef with him. He truly looks like a dinosaur. You see he's going over to Checking Elvis. Checking him out. Some, yeah. Uh oh, they're looking at each other. Yeah. See, like, that's why we won't let him out. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, they get very territorial. Yes. I Poor Elvis. He, I don't even think Elvis cares. He's just like, yeah. I'm just here, man. I'm shocked he would even try and pick a fight with him. Maybe I know. Because like there's glass there too. They get a little bit Yeah, up. exactly. You like <laughs> remove the, bo the boundary. And, but I know he doesn't realize like Elvis is way bigger than you, dude. What are you doing? And then like, so in this situation, when I go to pick him back up, I try to like be careful. Oh yeah, because he might. Because he, I don't know. You. Yeah, like yeah. he's he's like angry right now, or he, he's a, at least in an aggressive mood. So I don't want to make sure I don't want to accidentally get in the crossfires of that. Ooh, well, thank you so much for showing yeah. us some things. That's been great. Yeah, like, actually being able to take totally them out look. and learn about them a bit and see yeah. them walk around. 
Yeah, anything you need, you let me know. I thought I'll just give you guys a quick little tour around this place as well. We've got these big tortoises in here. So this is Matilda, I believe her name is, and she's not even half fully grown. So she's got a lot of growing to do. She's a very, very big girl. It's predominantly reptiles at the moment, but what they're doing is over the road there, they're building that aquarium and they're gonna have about 65% salt water and then some freshwater fish like discus and African cichlids and everything, it's gonna be awesome. Because it's primarily reptiles, there's a lot of big, big snakes in here. So there's these reticulated pythons, which are the type of snakes that grow very big and I believe they are from Indonesia. In terms of reptiles, I'm definitely more of a lizard and a turtle tortoise kind of person so that's why I love this little pond here that you see when you first come in it's got the cutest little turtles in it so I've got these guys here and then there's some little albino ones as well which are just beautiful they're so adorable and you can just walk past and have a look at them and then if you like snakes you'll love this we've got some anacondas in here which are huge. It really is a dream coming in here and just looking around. Like I've never seen such huge, beautiful enclosures. It's like the whole place is done up like a cave. It is really, really gorgeous. It's an experience coming in here. And the animals are so well looked after and they're so tame as well because they get handled all the time and everything and are handled from a young age too and hand fed. And I could just tell how much Brian loves these animals. Like he really, really loves them. We didn't really look through here too much because I think that Brian kind of knew I'm not as much of a snake person, but we did have a bit of a highlight. I got some videos on my phone of this little guy. So this sloth, Drogo, very, very cute. He um, tried to nip me very slowly, like 0.2 speed. So he's having a little sleep back there, but I will put some footage up of me giving him a little pat with Brian before. There's just snakes everywhere, like beautiful snakes. And one of the highlights about coming here too, is there's a lot of unusual and rare animals that you won't see anywhere else. So that's kind of Brian's thing. He likes animals that are interesting, that are different as well, and collecting them for people to appreciate here. So we've got salt and pepper, a cow reticulated python and she's got the most beautiful shine to her scales. Even though I'm not a big snake person, it's still interesting coming through here. Like you can still appreciate seeing all these huge, beautiful reptiles. And then we've got, of course, our little iguana that we saw before that I think is going to jump at me. So I'm gonna move. And then we've got Chip and Dale, some red-footed tortoises in here. It's also interesting seeing all of these reptiles because we're so limited in Australia with reptiles. We have very strict import laws and we can't keep reptiles like as a hobbyist that aren't native to Australia, as far as I know. So that's why we're pretty limited. So you don't see all of these animals, all these reptiles there like iguanas and stuff. So it's very, very interesting to me. But I think regardless, even if you're from America, it's still, you're still gonna see things here that you wouldn't normally see. Like where else do you see a sloth and an armadillo? Got a frilled lizard, night fury, another reticulated python in there. And then we've got very interesting Ben and Jerry. So even though this looks like one snake, this is two snakes because it was born with two heads and it's got two brains. So really it is two snakes in there, but with one body. And they've also got a tortoise or a turtle on the other side too that has the same thing. It's got two heads. But then some caiman lizards, which are just beautiful. So I think Connie was mentioning these before, that they're not quite tame enough to take out, but they are gorgeous, gorgeous lizards. I remember looking at these online once and wishing we could get them in Australia, because I think they're so beautiful. They look like little caimans, like little crocodiles. And speaking of crocodiles, we have some American alligators, which is one American alligator. So, oh yeah, uh, Brian showed this one to me before. I think it's the only albino uh, American alligator that they know of, and so that all that's in captivity. So that was pretty cool. I got to give her Freya a little hold as well. She's beautiful. She felt very, very soft, really soft little underbelly. 
So in Australia, we have freshwater and saltwater crocodiles. The freshwater ones are a little bit nicer in temperament, kind of more like the typical alligators here, I guess. So they're not really gonna come after you necessarily, but the saltwater crocs, you have to be really, really careful because they will come after you. So we can't go swimming at the beaches uh, of Northern Australia, and you wouldn't really go swimming in like the rivers and stuff or the canals because, yeah. Oh, you're gonna feed them? Yeah, well, oh. these guys. Okay. Man, I love this Milton, the Euromastic lizard. So cute, a little fat face. <laughs> I actually have to feed him. Do you want me to? Like, yeah. He's a little feisty. Oh, is he? He's a I wouldn't chonk. have thought so. Do you see how chonky he is? He, I can see he's very chonky. What a cutie. Yeah, look oh, at him. Look how colorful he is. He's like a hockey puck. Oh, I love him. I love him so much. So he's cute. like, look at his face. <laughs> And then he'll like sometimes just lick you. Oh, he definitely <laughs> is chunky. Yes, yeah, so I put him on a little diet too. I've um, cut back feeding, and uh, he unfortunately doesn't get like as much berries and stuff anymore because I was we're like weighing him and checking it on his weight and stuff. I want him to get too big, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, but he is your veg. So it's like, how are you gaining weight? You just eat salads all day, gain weight. Like, <laughs> how does that happen? Yeah, it's food food time. Uh, hey, baby. And you see how he goes bananas for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's straight into it. Yeah. It's dry in there. It's hot. This is a lot of work to upkeep all of this. Oh my gosh, I love this guy. He's beautiful. Is this a chameleon? Yeah. Yeah. It's a panther chameleon. A panther chameleon. Um, he looks like the guy in Monster Inc. Right now, he's a male. He's not, they're like very sensitive, which I'm sure you know a little bit about. So we don't actually take them out ever. Oh. Just oh. because they're, you know, chameleons are really sensitive. And so yeah. they don't want to. Yeah, they don't want to be touched stressful. and stuff. Yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah, if you try to touch him, he will try to bite. Oh, <laughs> I, you wouldn't even expect it. And I know, you, didn't, you wouldn't think chameleons to be like so cheeky, but he definitely yeah, is. a feisty guy. Someone is looking at me down here. Gemma is looking at me, the albino reticulated python. <gasps> She's very interested. Okay, we've got something else exciting. These baby gymnastics. <gasps> now I'm going to butcher this. These ones are the ornate. Yeah. So they're a little bit different in coloration. We think, we think that this one's the male because you can tell that he's got the definitely the brighter colors. His face is blue, which is just crazy. Yeah, they're fall. gorgeous. Yeah. Do you want to hold one of these? Sure. Guys? What did you say they are? So these are Euromastic lizards. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Will you bite me? No, absolutely not. No, and they're like babies, so they're like. They've been handled since they were born with us. They're nice and warm. I know, because their their um, enclosure is super hot. They're you know used to very arid, dry temperatures. Of course, I love them. I know. Can you just keep them here, like as a like like hobbyist or? Yeah. Yeah. That's really I mean, cool. I think so. Yeah. That's a good question. No, I think so. I'm pretty sure. No, we have like a certificate for the the sloth and the armadillo, yes. and then. Probably the capybars. Oh, I don't know if capybars. I'm always pulling them out of my hair, which it stinks like if they're, um, if you like did your hair that day. Oh my God. Is yours braided yes. right now? This place is just huge. It's absolutely awesome. If you live in the area or even if you are visiting the US, you definitely have to come and see it. If you're an animal lover, even if you keep aquariums and not reptiles, I think you will love it here. There's just so much to see. Brian is such an awesome dude. He is so nice. And I'm really, really glad that I made the drive to come here. I will uh, make sure that I link Brian's channel as well. So Brian Barcheck, I'm sure you've probably seen it before, but I'll link it anyway. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Let me know what you think and what your favorite thing was that you saw here today. And if you're enjoying this content, you would love to subscribe to my channel too, because while I'm in the US, I'm touring lots of different places and collaborating with lots of different content creators. So I think that if you like this, you'll really like the other videos I've got as well. So definitely check them out. I've made a whole playlist of it as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.